What do you think was the first picture ever drawn? Give up? I'll give you a hint. It wasn't this guy. Hi, I'm Bruce Blitz, and welcome to Cartooning with Blitz. And it was probably a buffalo on cave walls. Animals have always been a popular subject for artists, and today, that's what we'll be doing, drawing cartoon animals. And for our feature of the day, we'll go to the Florida Aquarium. It's a great place to see wildlife up close and sea life. And for our doodle trick, we'll do animal alphabet tunes, Finish cartoons from letters, so stay tuned for that. So let's get started, and let's do our first cartoon today, and it'll be of a dog. Now, cartoonists always have to have a bunch of dogs up their sleeve for their cartooning assignment. We'll start with a diamond shape, like this. Now, we're going to have a little cute dog, and we're going to have a very small little body. We'll make two little lines like that after you make that diamond, and make a little circle, very small circle. And then we do some lines like this, and some big shapes for his feet. All right, you got that? We'll go back up here, and we'll put in his cute little face. And we're going to put a nose up here, past the middle of the diamond shape and we'll darken the whole thing in and always leave that white space because dogs noses are real black and real wet so you want to make it look shiny like that now right from that nose we'll make a line coming down this way and wave it a little bit and come back up and do the same thing over here and we'll make him look like he's smiling and let's give him some whiskers now for whiskers you use circles now let's have his tongue out all right now for his eyes well let's give him real cute little eyes close together and real silly looking. So we'll have them close together in the middle, have his eyes meeting in the middle. And his eyebrows are up. And let's give him some little sticking up hairs like that. Now for his ears. Now the ears are what's going to make this sketch really work. Real big floppy ears right down to the side like this. It takes up his whole body. And here's his little body here. We'll put his uh, collar on. And let's make this look like dog fur and we can add some detail to the shape we are sorry so just by putting that shape in there it was just about done wasn't it very cute let's go back now and put some color into this guy let's see I use a little bit of brown I use my brown for make him spotty you know that says that there's an old expression that says that uh, dogs are man's best friend you know I'd like to expand that and say that all animals are a cartoonist's best friend. It's just funny to see them in all kinds of comic situations, acting and thinking like humans. Comic strip artists love cartoon animals. Look how many animal strips there are. A little red for the tongue, a little bit up there for his cheeks, and I was put a little for his collar too. Okay, that's a great sketch. Let's do another one, and I got a great idea for you. Let's do everyone's favorite dinosaurs and for our dinosaur we'll do a stegosaurus and that starts with a big old shape like this I don't know what you'd call it, it looks like a mountain doesn't it but and a line underneath like that and now we put his neck in which is a long pointed face like that and this will be his face down here we'll put some eyes on it some circles and that one's a little bit behind he'll have him peeking at us and his eyebrows are up. And notice the eyebrows are off the whole character. That doesn't matter in cartoon world. It works fine. And right from that point, we're going to make a wavy line, and that'll be his smile. Now, let's go back and put some more detail on this big shape that we started with. We'll put his feet in, and there are three, like, like toes like that. One, two, three, four toes. And we'll just go back over and make them look like nails, toenails. And we'll do the same over here. Everybody loves dinosaurs because dinosaurs are just fun because they can be used in all kinds of comic situations because they're real big and you can make them silly and it doesn't matter because they're not here anymore okay now from back here on the neck we're going to continue this and make a, a line like that and it's going to show that that's his backbone and then stegosaurus has those big I don't know what you call them but they go up and down his back and they kind of stick up in the irregular shapes that we're going to double and make it look like a three-dimensional object. And then his tail, which we're peeking out the back here like this. And comes back, and it's got those three spikes. 
And we can put some detail like this, some circles to make it look like it's got some texture. And let's put a big shadow that he's casting, like that. And of course we'll put him in a prehistoric setting. Put some hills in the back. And maybe some up there and some trees. Maybe this is where the first drawing was found, in the caves. Except I don't think that there were cavemen around. That's a misconception. A lot of people think that happened. Now let's do some color. Now let me see. For the color, let's use an unusual color. Let's use a aqua. Doesn't have to be the actual color. In cartoons, you want to make it a little more interesting. Now I'm going to go up this shape, and we're going to bear down a little bit harder on one side so we get that nice gradated tone where it starts out and it kind of gets a little bit lighter. Same thing here. Bear down a little bit on one side. Let's go back and do that one more time. There you go. And blend it in. A little bit up there and for his feet. And for the uh, shapes on his back here, let's use a little yellow. And for his spikes and some green for the ground. It came out great. Now for the next sketch, I'm going to do a real personalization, like you give animals a, a personality, and they've come to represent so many different things. So this will be a quickie, and we'll start with a very wavy line. Now watch this. Come this way and go. Very simple to do. And then you come back, same way, and just double that line. You can't go wrong. Whatever you do will work on this one. And you've got that, and then you're going to put a black shadow right on the bottom here, and it's going to be a bookworm, because it's a worm. And let's put glasses on him, and little eyes inside, and eyebrows up. And let's put a professor's hat on him. Like he's very scholarly, and that'll go along with the personalization. I don't know where that expression got started, that if you read a lot, that you're a bookworm, but it's certainly a, a positive thing to be, isn't it? And let's see, well, you know what? We can put a little sign over here that says library. And he's going to the library. Plus, where else would he be? All right. All right, let's put a little color into this guy. Hmm, let me see, what color can I use? I will use a little bit of blue. I use my color tuning pencils for this. And let's go right up and down that shape. And I'm going to leave the center part open with white, because that'll create a highlight or shine. Yeah, just like that. Okay. Now, I feel a tons of pun sketch coming on. Now, you all know what a tons of pun sketch is. A pun is a word that has a couple different meanings, and you can illustrate it that way, and it's a natural for cartooning. So I will draw it, and then you will tell me what you think it is. Now, I have most of it done already. But I'm going to add one more element to the picture. And right from this mouth, I'm going to draw a thermometer. And here's the mercury inside going up here, and some detail in it. And a big swirly because he's not feeling very well. Some cartoon effects like he's flying. And that's all the detail I'll draw. I'll show it to you now, and you tell me what you think it is. Give up. It's illegal. You like that? <laughs> All right. Let's do another sketch. And did you ever hear it said that animals look like people or people look like animals? I never know which way it goes, but we'll do one of those sketches around here. And that's a favorite. And let's start with a circle over here. And over here, a football shape. Now, this is going to be over here with the football shape it'll be a cat and we'll start with that football shape and then we put some detail on it for the ears and for the nose it's really a triangle with a rounded top like that and right out of that point a smile coming that way and a smile going that way and some whiskers and a little line there for the bottom of the mouth okay now let's have it be a female cat, and we'll have the eyes up like that, and some big old eyelashes coming out, and some detail up here, and a big bow in her hair. Yep. 
That's it. Now, that's my eyebrows. Now we'll go over and we'll draw the person who owns her. And we're going to duplicate the same features, only humanize them a little bit. Now, we can't actually make a triangle for that uh, nose, for her nose, but we can just take the bottom part and give her like a pointy nose like that. And we can't make quite the same kind of lines that we did there, but we can simulate that by making her have big cheeks. And down here for her mouth, well, here will be her lips and her lipstick. And we can have the same kind of eyes, and that'll make them look alike. And big old eyelashes, and here's the other eye. And let's see. Some eyebrows and a big bow. We can do that. That's the same. And now, how are we going to simulate these points, the pointy ears and the pointy sides here? I'll show you how. We'll have her have pointy hair. A real crazy hairdo. Have some coming out here. And then out the side. And this side here, and here's her ear and earring. She's pretty wacky looking. And there you have it, Kitty and Katie. Let's add some color to this real fast. You know, cartoons and advertising go real well because, as we said, it's come to represent so many different things, and advertisers love to use it. And maybe one day, when you get good enough, you'll be able to use uh, some of your, sell some of your sketches and you'll be able to actually bring in some money from that. Now, of course, we only do it for fun, but you never know. People will be coming to you all the time. Use a little bit of red. They ask you to help them out. They might need a sketch. You know, being a business like that on a freelance basis, it's a lot of fun and requires a lot of work. Hey, I've been doing it for years and, you know, I, I do the work of three men. Mo, Larry, and Curly. There you have it. Pets look like people. People look like their pets. I don't know which way it is, but now stay tuned for the feature of the day. Now, for the feature of the day, we'll go to the Florida Aquarium and take a look at all the wildlife and sea life. And then we'll come back here and we'll draw them. Now this is called a roseate spoonbill. Now if we could just find a knife and a fork bill, we'd have a whole place setting. Anyway, it's a beautiful bird and he uses that bill to scoop up food right out of the water. Very beautiful, pink color, makes a great subject. It really does make a great subject. And it starts with a circle shape. Right there, now, for the famous spoonbill. What we do is make a big free-form shape that comes out and back. And for birds, the expression comes from this line between the two beaks. So this line right here is what's going to make it look like he's smiling. See that up there? And we'll put some lines in it like that because it has some texture like that. Now we'll put his eye right there. And we'll have him a happy guy looking right at us. His other eyes peeking out that side. All right, now for his body. We connect it to the body by using a curved shape like that and a big teardrop that goes up and around like that. And some feathers, which is nothing more than going back over that shape and making some ruffles. Now, let's see, same here for the neck. For his legs, very skinny, long legs that we're going to have meeting at the middle, like his knock kneed or something. And his feet are down there. And let's see what else. We'll put some water in. Now they use that beak, the bill, to be able to scoop up food out of the water. So let's make a little swirly there so it looks like he did that. And let's put a little color in him real fast. You know, he's pink. And I think he's got a reputation for being a very expensive bird because, you know, all the other animals are really afraid when they get the bill. You get it? Okay. Well, it takes care of that. 
Pretty exotic looking animal though. You take a look at that and I'll play some exotic music. Let's go back and see what else they have. I'm here with a white alligator, very rare creature, and it's like the regular alligators, but this one's a leucistic alligator. It happens once every 10,000 times, I'm told, and he's one out of 20. Now, he's sleeping right now, so we have to be quiet, but uh, he's got very beautiful blue eyes that you can't see. Uh, he's uh, 12 years old, but I think he looks like 13 or 14, but look, that's my opinion. Anyway, he makes a great cartoon character, so let's go back to the studio and draw him. Now, to draw this unique creature, we'll start with his eye. And guess what? His eye was the only part of him that has any color. That's true. And it was blue. And we'll put some color into that in a second. And there's the line on top of the eye. That sticks up. Now we'll draw his, the front of his face. And another part that sticks up here is his nostril. Then we come back. And you break this line up a little bit. And I give it a big smile. And then down here, you just... Put the bottom of his face and you put some teeth on him. And you go every which way. And he's a happy looking guy, an eyebrow up. Now, for his body, one big graceful line coming there. And then for his tail, you just bring it all the way around and double it. Go back and come back to here. Now, what we want to do is put his legs in, his front legs, and connect this. And here's his belly. And here's his back legs. And there it is. And let's put some texture to his back. Really a very, very unique creature. One in 10,000. This happens once in 10,000. And he's one of 20 right now. A little shadowing. Here's his other legs peeking out the back. And for now, for that little blue, right there. And a couple of lines to show how bright white he is. Now let's head back to the Florida Aquarium and see what else they have. Now you see this silvery looking fish? It's called the permit. And it's the largest in the Pompano fish family. And you see how they have this mouth that's positioned way down low? Well, that enables it to scoop up clams and crabs off the bottom. Pretty neat. Uh, the clams and crabs aren't thrilled about it, but uh, it's a pretty neat looking fish. Now the permit fish was a big wide fish from the side. You see it from the front, it almost disappears very thin. So we start with a shape like that and put his eye in and have him looking at us, his eyebrows up. Now, his mouth, as I told you, is down low. And that lower lip comes out, and it's there because it'd be able to scoop up things on the bottom of the ocean. Now let's put some fins in, and they come out like this. And it's very silvery, pretty neat looking fish, that's for sure. And here's the back fins. And some detail on that. Now, let's draw something that he is about to scoop up or could scoop up. I don't know. And we'll draw a clam. So we'll draw two eyes looking up. And let's see, the eyebrows would go up. Because if we made the eyebrows go down, he would look angry. And if you draw an angry clam, you have steamed clams. You don't want to have steamed clams. So there he is. And here's the bottom part. And some lines for detail. And he's getting a little worried here. And he's thinking, gulp. Even clams swallow, I guess. And here's the bottom of the water. And you know what? I'm going to take a piece of chalk and show you the top of the water. Very nice. And now I'll put a little bit of brown for the ocean floor. Now, because he was so silvery and beautiful and shiny, let's put some sparkle lines on him. A 
Okay. Pretty neat looking fish, huh? Well, I had a great time seeing all the fish and wildlife here at the Florida Aquarium. How about you? Maybe in your town there's an aquarium or a zoo. It's a great place to see animals up close and to draw them. Now stay tuned for cartoon doodle tricks. Now for today's doodle tricks, alphabet tunes. And some friends stop by. How you doing guys? Hi. Hi. Okay, now we'll do animal alphabet tunes in keeping with the show's theme. And we'll start with a letter. A letter. How about you? Have we got a letter? D, okay. Put a D right here. Now, right over here we'll put a circle. Well, not actually a circle, is it? It's a continuing line. But it comes back to this part here, which is kind of a circle. It's going to be an elephant. I put an eye over there, and an eyebrow, and some detail on the trunk, and that's his big floppy ear. Now for his big body, and his legs, and his other leg peeking out in the back there, and some toes. Elephant toes are fun to draw, look at that. And a little tail. And there we have it. Like that one? Okay, yeah, let's do another one. Uh, someone else give me a letter. How about you? G. G, okay. And let's see, from a G, we'll draw another animal. Let's work pretty big on this one. I got a good one for you. Okay, from the G, right there, we're going to put two U shapes, and they're going to be for eyes. And right here, we'll put a diamond shape. And then some eyebrows. And a big upper lip, because it's going to be a gorilla. G is for gorilla. And put an ear. Your ears are kind of up high, aren't they? And now for some hair. Going every which way. Sillier the better. There you go. I like that. Okay, another one. I need another letter. How about, how about you? S. S, okay. Oh, I got a good one for S. S is for Sam the dog. So right up here we'll put a big oval and color it in, except for that little white spot. And right from that oval we're going to put a line going out this way, and one going this way, and some whiskers, and some eyes, right in this part of the S. And some eyebrows, and some big floppy ears. And there he is. See, let's have his tongue out. Sam the dog. You like that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you've enjoyed it and you at home. And for our blitz tip, I have a good blitz tip for you. Never be afraid of good habits and practice. And our blitz tip says it best, relax. He would never hurt you. And we have a giant dog labeled good habits and practice. And his friend's scared to death. <laughs> I'm Bruce Blitzing. Thanks for being with me and help me out, guys. Keep, Keep on, on cartooning. cartooning. That's right.